Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll start. I'm, uh, I'm Johan Stenberg. I did Google Summer of Code for Year Trellis this summer and I stayed on contributing to Year Trellis throughout the winter. And I'm going to talk about the GLP file format and how I implemented a reader uh, for Year Trellis in Scala. So, uh, Andrew asked how many of you were developers and every one of you raised your hand. So, if you work with the JVM, uh, how do you read GeoTiffs? So you have a few options, right? You have the GDO, the Geospatial CLib, which is fast because it's in C, and then you have GeoTools, which also is a Geospatial library in Java. And we don't really know like how does stuff run on JVM. We don't know. It could be fast, it could be slow. So why don't GeoTrellis just use one of these options? Well, because Currently, when I started, we actually used uh, GeoTools, uh, but that's a rather large dependency for only reading uh, GeoTiff files and shape files, so uh, we wanted to implement our own. We could use the Geo Java bindings, but they're hard to install, and yeah, I haven't actually made it work on my computer. Uh, and it's kind of the go-to raster file format to GeoTrellis, Rob, Rob mentioned it, and uh, we are, we're using it a lot. And we try to make things, every, every possible bottleneck at GeoTrellis should be actually as fast as possible. So we try to optimize and benchmark everything. I'm gonna show you some benchmarks later. So what is the Geo, everyone knows what the EOTIF is, right? Okay, yeah, maybe, yeah, okay, so, someone knows it. So it's a solution to the TIFF file format, and the TIFF file format is an image format from Adobe. And it actually adds geospatial metadata to an image. For example, you could add like the CRS and the bounding box through custom tags. So are these hard to read? Is it a good format? Yeah, in comparison to the TIFF file format, I like the extension. The bounding box, box is easy to read. It's just a matrix or whatever. But the CRS, I, I'm not a geospatial person, so I didn't know there were anything else than last long before like this summer. So. <laughs> So, uh, so, and so I don't understand what I'm doing, so I actually checked the GDO source code, and I turned it into a Prod4 string, and just threw it to the Prod4 J library, which is a really great library. And then we get the actual CRS. And then there's all the compressions in the TIFF file format. There's quite a lot of them, and we are now supporting the Huffman, the CCIT3 and 4, and the Packbit, which are only bytes, uh, and then the LTW and SIP compressions, which are, we use SIP for Rob's code. So now I'm gonna show you some benchmarks of like how, how can we make it run on JVM? How does it look like? And I have a disclaimer. So if anyone you get mad, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they ran on my MacBook Air, uh, 2012, uh, eight uh, gigabytes of RAM. They're conducted with Caliper, which is a micro benchmarks library for, from Google. And which with micro benchmarks, you have to look at the relative speed between the runs of the different libraries. You can't look at the actual speed because your machine is different from mine. And the GDL is read through the Java bindings into GeoTellus rasters, which essentially means that we're just like copying arrays. And the GeoTools is also read into GeoTellus arrays. So if we read a large uncompressed raster, which is 1500 by 1350 and it floats a float with 32 bits for bytes, we see here that the GeoTrellis reader is actually doing pretty good compared to GDL. And you might wonder why I haven't actually put GeoTools in there, and that's because they kind of mess up uh, what's happening. They, they're a bit slow at that point. But if we read a tiled uncompressed TIFF file, essentially they don't store, they don't store the image row by row. They actually store it like Rob showed in America, you know, tiled like this. We're a bit slower than GDL. We have about 30% more or something 40. And once again, GeoTools is doing something else. Uh, and the CCIT3 and 4, we haven't actually bumped into too many RAS, uh, TIFF files that actually use that compression, but uh, we implemented anyways, and we're pretty good at it. And once again, GeoTools. So the PackBits is uh, like a similar, similar. It's, it's fast, it's not that good at compressing stuff, but we're, we're right, right next to GDL. And then we have GeoTools again. So the LCW, we are a bit slower. We're about 250, 150% more. It's a kind of a messy compression. And then we have 
Geo2 uh, uh, again. And then this, for the zip compression, we actually could use the Java standard library, util.zip, to just throw the bytes in there and get out, get it out. So, and that works out pretty fine. I was kind of hoping that GeoTools would do that too, but they apparently aren't. Um, so, so I'm not a geospatial guy. So, and I was a beginner scholar when I did this. So I started using all these cool functional mappings. You know, you can write really beautiful stuff in Scala. But when doing my micro benchmarks, like I realized, okay, I have to stick to like the core. I have to stick to arrays, while loops, and like try to use bit operations. Like, and also I'm studying. So we like talk a lot in school about big O time complexity. But when, when you come to a point when it's just linear, you know, it's just linear. You just run through it, and therefore the micro benchmarks help me to gain a few milliseconds. So in the future, like it seems like it's a done format. The format has been out for so long, but there's a bunch of uh, different compressions. We want to have JPEG too, but that's a hard thing to implement. I didn't find anything open source that works. I haven't looked too hard either, actually. Um, we need to keep up to date with custom tags. So GDL actually adds like no data tags, which aren't in the in, in the specification. So we try to read them to S3 does the same thing. Also, we, if you remember, I told that GeoTools, we use that for a shapefile reader. Um, I actually tried to write one, uh, but then uh, GeoTools was 15 times faster than me. So I want to like exchange information with someone who is there. Um, so, thanks. <laughs> and now we will think about maybe a QA. If anyone has any questions. We're thinking that the like Beam Below will sort of be hybrided from S3. We, the analytics, throw it back on S3, and it will probably be like an S3 and um, Cloud Cache uh, in front of that, just serving out record result files and not trying to uh, pull it directly from Beam Below, because that has some problems with like trying to push it over into Mac memory um, or doing something like Cassandra. There's a couple different options of like what we're actually going to do as far as pulling the entire system out of the way. Uh, right now, we're concentrating on doing the analytics and sort of hybrid it up. Getting into some like uh, uh, like 
Could you ask the question again? Sorry. So, so one thing you seem to me to like focus on import is because it's an only duty business. You need to be dealing with more supply chain instead of all that duty on the on the regular supply yeah. chain. Yeah. Uh, your production is driven on these hours. Yeah. What 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 we are doing is um, <coughs> so yeah. What we are doing is uh, we read a tile right, mm -hmm. and like the result should be like an array of the type, the cell type of the tile. So for coming, for example, CRS, the reading of the CRS, the CRS is read into like this format, which pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, mimics the TIFF file for the GeoTIFF file format in memory. But then when you actually want the coordinate ref system, you have to pull it out, and that doesn't include the benchmark. So we already. Yeah. yeah, we put the whole thing in memory. Yeah, currently you don't. Have, we're we're actually going to implement those in the GeoTIFF file format. Yeah. But yeah, we don't do any projection logic. Yeah, but we uh, we just wanted like the bytes. So uh, like, if you would w if you just want to read image, you should be able to read image, right? You you shouldn't have to like deal with projection if you don't want to. That's interesting. We know of like some of your products that do something like that. Actually. Yeah, um, because we don't have implemented that yet, but it could be nice to look at. Anything else? Okay, thanks for coming. Thanks.